Hello ladies and gentlemen chess fans out there. I hope you are enjoying the London Chess Classic. A lot of draws, right? Here is a position from the Starry Mesto Open in 2012. Uh, with the white pieces is a, a player named uh, uh, Vaclav Fiala, who is uh, just below uh, Fide Master, rated about 2172. With the white pieces and with the black pieces, Grandmaster uh, Semensev. And uh, he's rated 25 26 uh, uh, at this time. Semensev is a you know pretty young guy, and so is um, uh, Vaklav uh, Fiela. Um, why show this position? Uh, this is the reason why is because a lot of people concentrate uh, heavily on the openings and. They often end up in these type of positions that can arise pretty much from any uh, opening and they just don't know what to do because they have neglected uh, this middle game slash end game uh, study. And so we're going to look uh, at some important aspects of this ending right here. Now, uh, the first thing we're going to look at, again, the Grandmaster has the black pieces, and he has just moved to uh, uh, F5. So King F5 has been played by Semansev, and uh, it's white to move, and white is the weaker player here. Um, now, the first thing you want to do when you're in these type of positions is you, you must look at the features of the position. You must analyze it thoroughly. Sit on your hands, right? Don't be in a rush to move, and... You, you kind of got to like reboot, so to speak, all right? Like you've uh, analyzed the position going into the middle game. You came up with your general plans, etc. And now you're finally uh, at the end and it's time to just reassess everything because a lot of the um, things that you use to, you know, make your plan in the middle games no longer applies here. Like, for instance, there's a bunch of open, uh, open uh, ranks and files. Uh, of course, open ranks and files are important, but not as important because your king can only move one space at a time. Nevertheless, they are important, but the value is, dim is diminished. Okay. Um, in this position, black has a slight advantage. Why is that? Because his king is better. That is the basic, uh, that is the basic reason why black has the advantage in this position. There's only one piece that... There's only one piece uh, on the board for each side. Uh, both just have their kings. And black's piece, right, or his king uh, is better. All right. With that said, there's a bunch of open lines. Again, you see the diagonals are open. The, in other words, it's not blocked. So there's many entry points into each side's position. This is very important. So that means each player must be very careful uh, not to allow some type of uh, penetration into the position. All right. Um, and so other than that, the game would, would, uh, be equal if the Kings were, um, more equally situated. Like if you could take, uh, you know, White's King and, you know, better centralize them. So in this position, the you must understand that you're worse. Okay. When you're worse, you play a certain way. When you're equal, you play a certain way. And when you're better, you play a certain way. When you're worse, you have to realize that you're worse and play accordingly. Um, there's no big dynamic move that White can do here to, you know, over, you know, uh, overcome Black here. All right. Black is slightly better, but nevertheless, he's better. So therefore, White should be assessing this position, looking at the problems that he can face. Well, the biggest problem I see for White, right, is that the black king is is um, centralized, and there's the open C and D files along with these uh, diagonals over on the queen side. So one of the obvious plans is black would love to penetrate to say B3, for example, or D3, in any of that um, you know light square uh, complex with those open C and D files and start eating up those pawns. All right. Um, so white must be careful to um guard against that penetration so one such idea comes to mind is a move like b3 okay uh creating a barrier here creating a barrier 
whereby the C4 square is guarded. Okay, and keep that in your mind. And also the D4 square is guarded. Therefore, the Black King will not be able to penetrate here or there. Okay, so that shuts down that you know idea. That's just a thought. This this is how this is how you should be thinking. Okay, so that shuts down this idea of black being able to come in over here. All right. Meanwhile, while black is not able to get in, white would love to be able to come over here and centralize. However, he has this other problem, which is this weak pawn on h3. Therefore, if the king would say to move over here somewhere and try to centralize, he always has to worry about the black king walking over here and grabbing this pawn. So this lets me know that white pretty much has to kind of stick to this area pretty much. He has to always be ready to get back and guard this pawn. So his only chances in this game to hold or to win are going to be in preventing the penetration on the queen side from black. And also um, keeping a close eye over here. And if black slips up. Because black has a weak uh, e pawn, so if black slips up and say wanders, right, without taking his proper precautions, and white could come up here and grab this pawn, or even get into these squares himself. All right. So the idea is that yes, black is slightly better, but black uh, has weaknesses also. But white just must be very careful. <clears throat> now looking at the black, no, looking at the black side. Of course, Black sees the open files and understands that he's better. And when you're better, you want to play in order to exacerbate uh, your advantage or maintain the status quo. All right. If there's an advantage or a way to maintain the advantage, you should you should seek after it so that your opponent just doesn't catch up to you. Um, so one of the obvious ideas, of course, is to try to get over here to the queen side. Now, I just discussed with you. White's idea of, you know, putting the pawns on the light squares, basically A4 and B3, preventing the penetration. So this brings the idea that eventually black would like to play, say, for instance, after a move like B3, black would not mind playing A5. I'll just show it to you. A5 with the idea of playing A4, right? At, at not not here, but at the right time. So let's let's just um, let's just make some random moves like King G2. King G2. Remember, I told you that White King needs to hover around this area, and B5. So now the idea is to play this move at some point A4, and either way, it will provoke this pawn either to a capture here or to B4. Once B4 occurs, this will allow the penetration of the Black King. However, is it enough to win? Because once the King wanders over to the Queen side, the King, this King can then come up through here. All right, so it, take, it all takes calculation. But anyway, those are, should be the thoughts in, in Black's mind. Let's go back to the start position. Um, of course, the other idea is if the white king wanders away, then the black king can go over there. All right. But so as it stands, black has no real immediate win here, even though he's slightly better. White can hold as long as he doesn't make additional weaknesses. Now, this is where the experience comes in. And this is why you should take time to uh, split up your study between middle games and end games and things like that. Um because this is where a lot of games are lost. Um, many times you might be playing an international master or something, and you get in a, a like an equal position and then get outplayed. And that's because the experience, you know, and the decision making comes into play. Because let's face it, nowadays, especially with engines and um, you know the videos and such, everybody that puts in you know two cents worth of effort can play the opening like a grandmaster. OK, um, I've seen it a lot, you know, um, you know, I've seen a lot of games, you know, players uh, come and play game 30, you know, 30 minute games. And they're playing Grandmaster. You look at the position at the 10 moves and it looks like, you know, it could have been Kasparov and Karpov playing. But 
you fast forward 15, 20 moves. Next thing you know, the the it less experienced player is down a pawn or a piece or something like that. And you're like, wow, what happened? You know, it's that lack of understanding in the middle game and in the end game that is often the the demise. So let's look what happened here. Let's learn. Let's learn here. So Grandmaster Samantsev played uh, King F5, right? Just centralizing the king. H4 from Vaclav Fila. This is a mistake. It's a big mistake already. Because by advancing that pawn. Now, of course, his his idea is he wants to keep the king from being able to come out here. But what he does is by advancing that pawn, right? He makes it harder for him to be able to protect his pawn himself. Okay? And makes it easier for blacks break at some point. So let's show you how the game went. So H4. And now the grandmaster played this move, h6. Okay, now he's just setting setting his pawns up for a break later on. That move, um, h6 wasn't even probably even the best move there. Um, more to the point is move like e5 or uh, a6 because I had explained to you uh, what White's plan is earlier with the move b3 and uh, a4. But anyway, h6, h6 is okay. okay. You know, black is black maintains the status quo. Okay, he didn't basically try to win yet, but he does a move that is not losing, is solid, and um, white's h pawn still remains as a weakness. So now, white shuffles back right to f2 because what else can he do? He realizes he has to stay in that area. And now you can see how this pawn is is more vulnerable being advanced a square. Instead of being back here, where he can readily protect it, it's up here, which makes it a little harder to protect. And as long as these pawns, these uh, E and F pawns stay, in, stay intact, the H pawn is protected. However, it's easy to win the game after E5 with the idea of just playing E4. Let me show you. E4. King G3, and then just E4. This forces this pawn either to advance, right, or or capture at at some point, or Black will capture. And once once this pawn is removed from the from uh, the F file, White, excuse me, Black then just has these two pawns, and he'll be able to create a pass pawn. Once he creates a pass pawn uh, on the King side, he'll have a decoy here. Let's matter of fact, let me show you that way I'm not just talking. So let's just capture. Okay, and now King F2, right? And now you can see it clearly. This pawn will will be a decoy and white will lose the game. He will, will eventually have to abandon the pawn on E3. Okay, that's the basic idea. So F2. Instead, though, Grandmaster Samantha, and this shows you that even the Grandmasters don't, you know, have the best technique sometimes. Instead, he plays A5, and of course he could have been in um, uh, uh, pawn trouble. Excuse me, pawn trouble, time, time trouble. So A5, and... The best move here for uh for black, excuse me, for white. Again, if he had analyzed the position properly and came up with the, the correct understanding, he would have played the move a4. Because remember, you want to stop the penetration. You want to stop the possibility of the king, black king penetrating over here. So you play this move, a4, which stops b3, and excuse me, stops b5, and then you follow up with b um with B, uh, B3. So for example, A4, and say he goes for the idea again with E5, King G3, E4, and then you just, you just uh, block, you know, blockade there. H5, and now B3. Now, black cannot get through. Black has to, in order for black to get through, black has to come all the way over here to the dark squares now. Okay, and that leaves, that leaves, um, that leaves the uh, king side vulnerable now. Okay. 
Or you could just defend like this. It's a dead draw. However, so so a5 was a mistake by Semansev. e5 is just winning immediately. <clears throat> so a5 was played and the opportunity was missed on a4. Instead he played b3. Again, a uh, e5. So uh, Grandmaster Smancer missed this idea. He, he he it didn't come to mind. Again, e5, and it's all about Tepi here. And here is where the weakness of this h pawn is exposed. Now, if he tries to pass right with this move, then just simply king g4. <clears throat> no way to protect the pawn. If this pawn is on h3, it's a different story because you could just scoot the king over and protect. Instead, he played b5 here. All right, so he's gained more space and he's not really putting the clamps down on a white position. He's still giving white a chance to defend here. King e2, and now he finally hits on this idea. So he missed it a couple of times, but... He finally hits on the idea, he plays e5. Here's just a mistake because um, white white was trying to basically stop e4. But in such positions, often you can just sacrifice the pawn, which is what he does here. He plays e4 check. Now, I saw another win. When I first looked at this game, I saw g5 winning is right, right away. It's the same principle, is that you create... The uh, pass pawn on the king side. So say if he just tries to block everything. You play g4 anyway. And after f takes g4. The king takes g4. And then the h pawn is going to fall. And then you create your pass pawn that way. Instead of capturing. If he just tried to bypass with f4. He takes e4 check. And then you have two pass pawns on the f and g files. <clears throat> So G5 wins also. E4, again, it's the same scenario, creating a pass pawn on the king side. King E2, E takes F3, king takes F3, and now G5 with the same idea with the decoy. And after H takes G5, H takes G5, it's going to be all over. Eventually, the white king is going to have to go to the G file to stop the pawn, and then black is prepared to grab the E pawn and then transfer over and grab the pawns on the a and b files so um, that is it and uh the uh white player was uh forced uh forced to resign but um again these are the type of practical endings that you have to you have to study you know and uh get used to analyzing because you will end up in these positions often yes h4 was a big mistake um Again, there's, is there any general concept here that would prevent you from doing a move like h4? It's hard to, it's hard to say. Normally, if you're in a worse position, you don't want to try to um, like break out, so to speak. Um, I guess the one rule you can try to follow is you don't want to try to create additional weakness. Like if you, it's like if you got a problem, don't create a secondary problem. Okay, and that's the thing. This move h4 creates a secondary weakness. But I'm sure at the time that Fiala thought that he was preventing the king from going to g5. So he didn't look at it like that. But um, yeah, pushing those pawns forward just makes the defensive task more strenuous. And eventually that's what cost him the game is pu pushing that pawn. Um, so the concentration when you're worse, often should be on, you know, on defense. And then um, once you have everything, you know, shored up. You know, as best you can. Of course, you want to look for opportunities to counterattack. But um, uh, usually moving the pawns, um, you know, in an area where your opponent is attacking is usually not not too good. And so that's kind of what happened here. Um, again, my suggestion instead of that move h4 is just simply a4. 
Of course, there's other moves that can be played. B3, but just for my analysis, because again, I want to play the, this idea of B3. All right, so this is just example of how play could go. So A4, H6, B3. Again, now we have we we've solved this problem. So if the king wants to penetrate in the queen side, the king has to go all the way over here. And that gives white opportunity then to march his king up here. A6, because remember, black has weakness too, so he can't get too crazy with just marching off with the king. H4. Uh, king f2 could have been played here also, but king h4, king e5, king g4. Notice how the uh, other strategy I mentioned, how the king is just kind of hovering uh, hovering around this area. Okay, because you can't leave the h pawn unprotected. King d5, and again, this is just an example. And you keep, you keep uh, black honest. If he tries to keep it, you know, keep going. King, like king c5, now white is the one with the upper hand at the king e5. So, black would have to play a move like that, like a5. And white has pretty much solved most of his problems. Remember, the main problem was that uh, black's king was better. Now, black black's king is slightly better here, but white has improved his position a lot here. So now he could play a move like h4, perhaps. Okay. And see, now white has improved his king. e5. It's king d3. You now you have this opposition problem. King uh, uh, e4 check. Sorry about that. E4 check is a mistake. Yeah, perhaps move like F4, just dissolving the the uh, dissolving this these pawns here. So, for example, E takes E takes. Let's say King E6, King E4. And white is able to uh, hold comfortably. Of course, there's many different, you know, different variations. But I just wanted to give you the spirit, you know, the you know general kind of flavor of how you know the ending uh, could go. But um, yes, H4, H4 is definitely the cause of the uh, the loss. But um, but interesting enough, again, um, black didn't play super accurate himself. Um, after a4, definitely a move like e5 could have been played. But what a lot of grandmasters do is they might not play the most accurate move, but they just play a move that doesn't doesn't lose or doesn't um, de doesn't de uh, deteriorate the position. That's the word I want to use, right? They might not play the most accurate, but but the position isn't deteriorating. So whatever little advantage he has, he still has it. Okay. But white then has to take those opportunities to improve his position. So after h6, white has a chance to improve, right? Say, for instance, he could play a4 now when, when black had the chance to play b5, but he doesn't play it. Instead, he plays king f2. Okay? So when you have a chance to improve, basically, if, if the player does nothing, it's giving you a, like a free chance to do something. And again... Black has a chance to end the game with a5, excuse me, with e5. But instead he plays the move a5. Again, black does not deteriorate his position, but it gives black, it gives white the chance to, to, you know, hold the position. So again, he had the perfect opportunity to set up a4 and, and b3. So instead he played b3. And again, uh, e5 here uh with a one for uh one for black so a lot of mistakes back and forth but eventually a uh, black was able to bring home the point and again i hope you uh learn from this video as usual and i uh, hope it inspires you to you know start looking at some uh end games some practical end games and uh, analyze them for yourself and, and come up you know with your own uh conclusions this will definitely strengthen 
uh, your game because the middle game and end the game is definitely a neglected part in a lot of uh, a lot of players' uh, repertoire these days. Everybody's trying to win out of the opening, which is which is a ridiculous concept. And I beat a lot of players in positions like this because as the game goes on, I find a lot of players their game deteriorates, and I feel like my chances get better because I I can I can tell. By certain moves, okay, this guy doesn't know know what's going on here, or he's confused, and um, you know you can win a lot of points with these type of positions. So anyway, please like, subscribe, and I will see you shortly on the next video.